Keystone runes are overrated. What do I mean by this? I don't mean to suggest that Keystone runes aren't good. They are amazing. Whether you're talking about something that's older, like Electrocute, which is basically a buffed version of Thunderlords, or something entirely new and exciting like Klepkomancy, I love all of them. Well, almost all of them. But I think a lot of the focus, excitement, and discussion surrounding these runes is just around Keystones for these past few weeks that they've been out. Which one's best? Which one's most fun? Is this one overpowered? Does that one need a buff? But personally speaking, one of the most exciting exciting parts of the new rune system to me is how almost every tier of rune is just as important or sometimes more important than what you're taking for your keystone. These runes can have more of an individual impact on whether you win a game or not than your keystone in the right circumstances and they require just as much thought in deciding which to take. This is a life-changing moment for you as this short five-minute video is guaranteed to change your bank balance from this to this in under 30 days. So one thing I've been working on lately is seeing if I can find a good top laner that can use Kleptomancy really effectively. Someone fun and exciting and not named Gangplank. Kleptomancy is one of the most unusual keystones added to the game. All the keystones in the inspiration tree are unusual and fun. None of them just give a normal stat, like how Electric Q gives you just flat bonus damage. They all interact with the game in really weird ways, which causes you to change your playstyle when taking one. But Kleptomancy in particular seems strange since on top of the gold mechanic, you also get those random items. This weird RNG makes things sound really exciting if you decide to take this for your keystone. So I've been trying to find some top laners this will work on to make a super fun clickbait YouTube gameplay video. However, there's another reason I've been trying to find top laners specifically for this video. By taking the inspiration tree as your primary rune and then pairing it with a secondary guarantees that you gain an interesting stat plus 20% potion duration. That's something that can have a deceptively large impact on the game, and it's pretty damn good on top laners who build Corrupting Potion. Corrupting Potion, of course, gives you three charges that heals your mana and your health while simultaneously giving you a bleed on your auto attacks while the potion is active. But being able to refill it every time you go back to base for free means that you sustain a lot and get to spam this potion tons throughout a full match. Corrupting regenerates 10.4 health every second, lasting for 12 seconds for a total of 125 health over its duration of a single charge. If you add this 20% efficiency bonus, Bonus, though, you'll get a bonus 25 health each charge that you use, taking you from 125 health to 150, and that's not nothing. 25 health here and there adds up a lot over time and can mean a ton in a lane like top lane where trying to trade and sustain through healing is so important. If you add up the healing bonus this gives you over the course of a game, let's say you recall six times and get six full corrupting potions off in laning phase, maybe a little bit in the mid game, that totals up to 450 health that you've healed plus a crazy amount of mana, not to mention the bonus time that you have to throw out auto attacks and deal extra damage with your bleed. Couple that with the biscuit rune you can take in the inspiration tree, which I assume also stacks with this passive, and you're looking at easily having over 500 health throughout a laning phase in the mid game that you wouldn't have healed otherwise, and that's just through half of a passive in the new rune system. This is really exciting to me for some reason. I don't know if you guys think this is cool, but I swear these keystones are still great and a hugely important thing when deciding which tree you want to go down, but we're probably not noticing just how much these other runes are affecting our games even more so. One of the obvious examples that's a lot easier to see visually is the Triumph rune in the Precision Tree. This is the rune that heals you for 15% of your missing health after getting a kill or assist. Now when you go down this tree on a bruiser, let's say, you suddenly have so many more towers diving opportunities than what you had before. There's plenty of examples that you'll find yourself in where going for a kill previously would end in a one-for-one -one trade as the tower killed you, but now you can live if you're aggressive enough and get the kill quickly so you get the healing. One of the things I really love about this rune in particular is its riot seeming to be a lot more encouraging of much more aggressive play styles and opening up opportunities to reward players who actually go and try and make a play proactively. This is a problem that League has had for a 
while now where a lot of players, I mean, you see it in professional play all the time, you're not really encouraged to go and be aggressive and maybe get a kill. And part of that is because a kill doesn't necessarily guarantee that you win the lane or win the game. League has really felt like a game where it's a lot more about the weakest link on your team rather than who has the strongest carry, at least this past season. But now it finally seems to be changing where this is super exciting. I mean, one singular rune is kicking that off and encouraging a lot more aggressive play, snowballing hard in lane and giving more carry-oriented mindsets to players for the first time in forever. In the right circumstances, this rune can win you a game. It can get you a kill you otherwise wouldn't have been able to get, let you snowball your lane off of that, destroy your opponent, and set you up for a very easy mid and late game to close out a match. I mean, that's a pretty important rune to take and play compared to the other options you have, like being able to have a Bloodthirster passive. If you want another example of what I mean when I say these runes can affect your game more than your keystone, try playing a champion who goes down the Resolve tree taking Grasp. Grasp of the Undying is amazing. Again, I don't mean to diminish its importance, but some of the non-keystones in this tree are hugely impactful on your games. York, for instance, is a champion whose build usually looks something like this. Now, this five bonus armor might not do too much, and even if you're playing a match where the bonus is activated for a quarter of the game, let's say, that's a bonus that's only giving you 10 to 15 more armor in total, everything combined with the rune, kind of depending on how much armor you've stacked. But try taking a look at this runes tab in your match history and look how much demolish and second win stack up. For instance, depending on how much you split push as well as whether you win or lose the game, you might be dealing somewhere between 8,000 and 12,000 damage to towers in a match. Then notice that 4,000 of that damage came from demolish. I've still only played around with this rune for maybe 20 or 30 games or so, so keep that in mind, this is a pretty small sample size, but generally speaking, however much damage I deal to towers, a third of it is coming from this rune every time I take it. That's a pretty serious effect this rune is having on your game, allowing you to take important objectives a lot easier, either by chipping away at them and making towers more difficult for the enemy to defend, or bursting them down so quickly that they can't come and defend it in time. That's a really important and significant rune, but hey, if you're only taking resolve for your secondary tree, you might still have a decision to make here. Do you want to take demolish or maybe second wind? That's an argument that you could make, especially if you're in a losing lane top lane where you might not be able to get to towers for a while. That second win could save your life and prevent you from losing the game. I mean, if you want to see how good second wind is, just look at how much it stacks up over the course of an entire match. This match was a decently long game that we did end up losing, so maybe this had something to do with it, but I had a total of 3,000 health from this rune alone healed. That's how much health my champion has at full build. If you're someone who starts Dorn Shield too, your health regen goes insane after taking Poke. Look at this solo Renekton only gameplay. Currently, he's healing 18 to 20 health per second after getting hit by a Gangplank Q. For comparison, his base healing at this level is 3.7. Okay, okay, I do need to settle down here for a second. Not all of these runes give you secret huge bonuses that'll win games for you while you don't even notice. Some of them are actually the opposite. On most damage dealers, aggressive champions who go down the domination tree either as a primary or secondary one of the most important decisions when choosing runes is deciding whether you want to take sudden impact or cheap shot do you want more damage when your opponent is stunned or after you've used a dash i haven't tested this out myself yet but i'd wager depending on your champion and play style one of these runes will consistently deal more damage for you than the other and making sure you take that rune and learning to ignore the other one might be kind of important and you're just getting a little extra damage here anyway. That's the same thing that your keystone's probably doing for you, but maybe a little bit worse. Similarly, you just kind of see what you get with other runes like the Ghost Poro one, which I haven't tried taking it myself and I haven't really seen many other people use it, but I think it's safe to say that it's not some sort of hidden OP rune that's going to win you games where if you take it over Eyeball Collector, it's just so much better. But even with a lot of these underwhelming runes out there, seeing how good some of them are just makes me really excited and is another thing that makes the new rune system so great. If we're comparing it to the old runes and masteries, the old runes and stat bonuses you got from the masteries felt kind of meaningless after a while. You just kind of got numb to them. Like armor yellows just gave you a little more armor and that's it. You never really 
actually felt it. If you chose not to go for them, you could just build cloth armor and get more armor from the cloth armor anyway, right? I already talked in my last video about how exciting it is that these new runes give you abilities and not just stats, meaning they aren't replaceable by items or other characteristics in game, and there isn't one obvious choice for what's optimal and what's best on every champion. But another great thing about this change is Riot took the opportunity to make every rune feel valuable. You don't have these rinky dinky stats which do kind of help you but they're hardly noticeable. I mean these runes might change the outcome of a game depending on what you take and finding a combination that works for you and your specific playstyle is a super rewarding experience and it's, it's just so insanely fun to see how useful they all are. If you haven't already, take some time to look at your stats and your match history under the runes tab. Seeing it all laid out here is really interesting and it brings up even more questions that you kind of got to think about. This is how much damage I dealt with Demolish in a game that I won. It sure was effective here, but what about this game? I lost it and I hardly did anything with the rune. Maybe I should try taking something else instead. But what about this game? I lost this, but it was still super effective. Maybe it's worth taking after all. I absolutely love all of this and find it super interesting. Another reason why I really think Riot hit the nail on the head with these rune changes. Today's video was probably something that was a little bit hit or miss with most of you guys since I realize a lot of you are already smart enough to understand everything I've laid out for you here in today's video and those people have probably already clicked off the video but either way I still hope some of you enjoyed. Shout out to all my patrons supporting me on patreon.com where we're almost at that goal to bring back GBA 100 already which I did not think we were going to get anywhere close to for months so shout out to all of you guys. I really did not expect that to take off and it has already exceeded my wildest expectation. But anyway, I will be back with a new video soon. Until then, thank you very much for watching. Good luck in solo queue and have a wonderful day.